It was last Friday, five days ago, on the 1st of March, when an improvised explosive device shattered the peace of Bengaluru and the nation. It was detonated at Bengaluru's very popular Rameshwaram Cafe in Whitefield. At least 10 people were injured, two of them seriously, but five days on and there is still no trace or even any known clue of who the bomber really is. In this India Today special investigation, the first of a series through the week, our open source intelligence team decodes the CCTV images of the bomber, the man in a cap and a mask whose face is now on wanted posters across Bengaluru and across the country. And India Today's Ankit Kumar is the one who pulled out that story. He's the one who put it together, providing the first open source intelligence clues of what this attack was really about. Ankit, uh, five days on, no uh, leads, at least that we know of, the National Investigation Agency has taken over the case. But from what you've looked at in these images of the chief suspect, the man believed to have planted that explosive device, shows that he was no amateur. He knew what he was doing, clearly trained in evasive tactics, wearing a cap, wearing a mask, and as you've reported in your story, Ankit, uh, uh, you know, probably professionally trained in how to, you know, not be captured so that he can be easily identified. Well, Shiv, over the past few days, me and my colleague Arvind Oja, we have also spoken to some of the very credible old hands in the intelligence community. We have also analyzed the evidence that is available in the public domain. Yes. You know, when the incident was first reported on Friday, there were initial indications that it could be an accident or a business rivalry or some local gang member doing their thing. At this point, we can actually rule those angles out. Hmm. We are now being told by our sources that the probe is now moving towards a terror module that has all the telltale signs of a sophisticated anti-surveillance training. Yeah. Now, why do we say so? There are at least five separate CD footages that are now available in public domain showing the bomber. Yeah. Not once that bomber is seen turning his head either left or right. We are being told that this is not a coincidence. These are signs of a very well-trained operative who is fully aware that there are cameras, where are they placed, and what's the best angle to avoid facial detection. Remember, mm. if in any Indian city you would you would want these CCD cameras to be work on facial recognition software, it would be Bangalore, India's IT city. We are also given to understand that the phone device that a bomber is seen using may not actually have been in use and was used to mislead the investigators. Because phone surveillance is the first yes. clue that any probe agency look for. These are some of the many subtle signs that indicate presence of a sophisticated terror cell that is not likely to be an organic and local. And, and what, you've, uh, you, you know, what you've deduced from this very limited uh, imagery and uh, you know, open source information, Ankit, is also very disturbing, which is not only is this man clearly <clears throat> you know, a professional who knows what he was doing, but that it is possible that uh, you know, he is doing it either at the behest of or with the training of or at the instructions of a module that may be overseas, possibly in Pakistan. That is that is one of the biggest concerns that all the officers that we have spoken to they have expressed, because there are not very that there are not very much active uh, those kind of sophisticated scheduled uh, those kind of uh, terror kind of uh, sleeper cells that are that are, are active in, in 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 this country. It was the case few years back, but for past seven, eight, nine years we have not seen those yes. kind of incidents. There is one person, however, called uh, uh, Faratullah Gori. An original, an original from Hyderabad, mm. now lives in Pakistan, works very closely with ISI, and it is being suspected. It is too early, but it is suspected if there is one person who could pull this together, it could be that module under working under the ISI. We don't know that yet because there is not enough evidence. That is why you have NIA issuing a picture, NIA asking for help from public, offering a bounty yes. or any kind of clues. But what we are given to understand is that the person was not working alone. The person was also, we have also examined the crime scene evidence that was seen in, in the pictures and we have matched the devices uh, that was used in Mangalore Blast. And you know, what is interesting is that the timer, yes. it's, a, it's a very common utility timer. One of, the, one of those timers that we use in our um, water motors mm, for, for mm. Starting, the, starting the water motor in, in, in our societies. So those kind of daily utility uh, items like six volt batteries, 
that is a very common pattern that is clearly visible between the 2022 Mangalore blast and 2024 Bangalore blast. So intelligence agencies are looking at those right. angles. Probe agencies are also looking at th those angles. Okay, very, very troubling layers and new leads. The first public clues uh, from that information and in India today uh, assures you that what Ankit has given us today is only part one of what will be a constant investigation into what has happened. It's been five days. There are scant images of the bomber. It's absolutely clear that he's a professionally trained individual and we will continue to track it. Ankit, thanks very much for the story and that perspective on this story. The cafe blast continues to be a big focus.